You know, relationships are wonderful things, and there's no relationship more sacred than the one shared between a miner and their mining equipment. It's a symbiotic relationship where mining rigs are supplied with power and in turn make their owners rich enough to buy a Nissan Micra just like PewDiePie. Not the one in the more recent video, the, the old busted older Superfly ultra stylish one that brings in all the anime boys and girls to the yard, you know what I'm talking about. But just like many relationships, the one between a miner and his rig aren't immune to souring, and man, has it soured. That's right, Mini the Mining Rig, that's what we named it. You're not pulling your weight anymore, honey. Mining profitability is down, and now we're just wasting time and energy. It can't go on like this. If only there was a way you could be put to good use again. Wait, is there? Now that mining isn't worth as much anymore, is there anything else mining rigs, or at least some of their parts, can be used for? Is there a way to save our relationship? <laughs> Well, as it turns out, there is a way, a few ways actually. That's right, even if they aren't bringing in as much cash per day as they used to, mining rigs and their parts can still prove useful for applications other than mining, and those are what we'll be looking at in this video. But before we get into it, I wanna remind you guys that we do have a second channel now. We have UFD Deals, where we're gonna be posting the hottest, latest daily tech deals that are going on across the interwebs. That's gonna be, it's a series that's been on the channel, but we think it'll be better suited as a second secondary channel, so be sure to smash that little I in the top left right hand corner on your side that uh, gives you some information about that and there's also the link in the video description if you guys want to get subscribed to that. Subscribe if you're interested in tech deals, don't subscribe if you're not, no big deal, but anyways, let's get into the meat of this video. So first up, gaming. Now, I know it sounds crazy, but believe it or not, you can actually play games on a mining rig. It's not the best gaming experience ever, but you can do it. What's even better, apparently, you can even disassemble the rig and use one or two graphics cards to game on. What? Okay, no, but seriously, the most obvious thing to do once your rigs aren't profitable enough for you to keep mining with them is to sell it off entirely or sell the parts off individually. Or if you want to keep it around just in case, you could set it to only mine when profitability is at an acceptable enough level. But if for whatever ridiculous and in entirely unlikely reason it turns out you can't sell it off or use it to mine, like if all crypto suddenly switched over to proof of stake simultaneously, there are ways to repurpose your mining rigs, or more specifically, ways the graphics cards sitting in them can be utilized. Or more specifically, things the graphics cards sitting in them can be utilized for. Science. Mining cryptocurrencies primarily for the monetary rewards on offer is a pretty selfish thing. Of course, there's nothing wrong with being selfish and trying to make money if it doesn't hurt or affect anybody, except for PC gamers pining for GPUs or the environment, maybe. But let's not get into all of the other things that we compromise on it for the sake of the environment and not really consider the ramifications of everything we do. But what you may not know is that your money-making machines, even though they don't make all that much money anymore, can actually be used for a much more altruistic purpose. That being the betterment of humanity's scientific understanding. That was a weird way of saying it. That's right, various ongoing scientific grid computing projects would be more than happy to borrow the power of your mining rigs and even your gaming rig. These projects make use of a distributed computing where a massive number of systems work towards a shared goal. Folding at Home is one of the most well-known of these projects and it uses the donated computational power to simulate protein folding, which could help scientists and researchers gain a better insight into diseases including cancer, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's amongst others. If you're more interested in contributing to other fields of research, including including mathematics, physics, astrophysics, but molecular biology, climate studies, or even cognitive research, there's a fairly extensive list of projects based on the Berkeley Open Infrastructure for Network Computing. You definitely should check that out. Gamers Nexus actually has a more in-depth article on the subject available on their site, and if any of this strikes your fancy, so links in the video description, and yes, you can even search for extraterrestrial intelligence known as SETI. I remember doing that when I didn't even have like a dedicated graphics card. I was like on the Intel graphics media accelerator days and they just were like, hey, help us search for the alien signals. Use your computer. And I was like, sweet, that sounds good. And then I just let it go because I was a young naive kid on the internet. And I had no rhyme or reason. Anyways, moving on. Let's render all the things. Compared to donating your GPU power to science, this idea is far more niche because it'll only be useful to miners who are also into 3D video or animation rendering. And even then, only if the program you're using for your renders makes heavy use of GPU acceleration for your rendering tasks. If this sounds like you, then great. There's a chance your GPU mining rig can be configured, upgraded. You'll likely need to upgrade to a far more capable CPU and motherboard at the very least, unless you're mining on Threadripper, and tweak to act 
as a render node or farm, which vastly reduce the render times on your projects. If this doesn't sound like you, then you could probably still convert your mining rig into a render node or something and maybe hire it out to artists who could really use the extra horsepower to meet a tight deadline. It's not really something that's in our area of expertise of getting set up, but we don't see why you shouldn't do it. You can make money by rendering stuff out. You're using your GP, like that's the whole point of behind mining. You're trying to make money using your computer. Turn it into a render farm. You can do it. Get creative with your graphics cards. Okay, so you have a ton of graphics cards you can't mine on or sell. The logical thing to do with them would be to add them into other systems. Two in your gaming rig, one in your significant other's rig, one in your home theater PC, one in your mom's old system with a Pentium so that she can play solitaire at 4K, and one in your dog's PC. Dogs are man's best healer mains after all. But it's not enough. You're still stuck with another card or two without systems to pair them up with. What are you gonna do? What am I gonna do? Well, what if I told you that there was another system or two laying around somewhere that could really make use of some ex of that extra GPU horsepower? That's right, your crappy notebook that barely manages to play even YouTube videos in 720p. Sadly, desktop GPUs and laptops don't go together as harmoniously as chilies do with literally any dish ever, at least not without a little help. See, because laptops that don't break the bank usually don't break any game benchmarks. Either there's a pretty big community of people who figured with some ingenuity they can make their desktop graphics cards work with their underpowered notebook, and thus the eGPU as we know it came to be. If you've got the know-how or the patience to follow along with relatively basic instructions, then you could repurpose your leftover cards to boost your notebook's gaming prowess. There are multiple DIY ways to do just that, many of which can be found on eGPU.io, but if you don't quite know what you're doing and don't intend to find out, you can always buy an external GPU enclosure or dock. The likes of Gigabyte, PowerColor, Razer, along with a quite a few other manufacturers produce these enclosures where all you need to do is plug in your desktop GPU and connect the dock to your notebook. Performance won't be on the same level as it would be if it was the card installed in a regular desktop system, but you're on a mining rig anyways, you're running a Celeron. Who cares? So it comes more than close enough to be worth the blood, sweat, or cash. And guess what? If you have a float plane subscription, Linus Tech Tips, you'd see that they've already done this where it's a cheap GPU way of actually getting the external graphics card to work. Who knows if it's on YouTube yet, because I don't know when they're dropping the video on YouTube, but float plane plug, there you go. Get way, way more creative. With those three almost useful and legitimately interesting ways to put your mining rigs to work while profitability is too low out of the way, let's get into a few slightly more obscure, charitable, and probably stupid uses for your worthless pieces of poop mining rigs. Space heaters. Winter is coming in hard and fast over in South Africa, and space heaters are pretty pricey. Luckily, even though they're not earning you a ton of coin anymore, your mining rig can double as a heater when things get all chilly. And we're not even joking. I tested this exact same thing last year with just two cards and a CPU mining away, and they legitimately kept my bedroom nice and toasty if you consider 66 degrees Fahrenheit toasty. But consider this, there's no insulation in my South African house. I'd like there's no way to warm it besides actually using a heater because there's no central air. So I have to use something. I have to use a space heater and that uses what? 1250 to 2000 watts because that's what it takes to heat up a room. But if you have a mining rig that's running on a 1300 watt power supply, you use the thousand of those watts. You're basically, instead of paying for a space heater, you're paying to mine, but you were gonna pay that money anyways just to stay warm. Makes sense. But if you've already amassed a healthy fortune from all of your mining shenanigans, you could consider donating your cards to the poor GPU-starved PC gaming masses. They haven't even seen a graphics card in real life for like months now. And they've been gaming on integrated graphics for far too long. So cut them some slack, man. Donate them a GPU. Just be like, hey, I'm a miner. There you go. Merry Christmas, except for it's not Christmas. So happy holidays. If you're not the charitable type, you Scrooge McDuck and more of the poop head type, and would rather destroy all your equipment rather than handing it all over to whiny gamers, you can actually decorate your PC man cave with the remains. Whoa, that came out weird. We mean you can use your fried or unused PC components, not gamers, as decorations. So talking about Linus again, the LTT crew decided to use old and broken pieces of tech like motherboards and the like to decorate their offices, and the results were actually pretty impressive. Spray painted motherboards, GPUs, PCBs, RAM modules, and whatever else stuck onto a large piece of wood looks a heck 
of a lot cooler than it sounds, and you can probably easily do it yourself. It's okay, open, okay, back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. As we said earlier, the most logical thing to do with your mining equipment, if you don't want it anymore, is to sell it. And obviously, this silly video isn't going to change that. It's not intended to. What we do hope is that it, it's an interesting look at unusual ways to utilize your hardware that you may not have considered before. Lending computing power to researchers to help them discover and learn new things is definitely our favorite amongst all of the alternative uses that we've looked at. And if you got some PC muscle to spare, you'd be hard press to find a better use for it, or at least until mining becomes more profitable again. Gotta earn that coin, man. And obviously there's been the recent implementation that these scientific researchers are also giving you their own coin, boink, or whatever it's called. You can earn coin at the same time that you're helping out researchers. I'm not sure what the coin's worth, and I don't think the whole purpose is for you to actually earn money. That's, again, not it. But these are just our ideas for how to repurpose your old mining rigs if you're not indeed selling them. Be sure to let us know what your favorite was, but then also let us know what other creative ideas that you have for repurposing your mining rigs down either in the community discord or in the comments down below here on YouTube. Be sure to smash that like button. If you enjoyed this video, get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content here on the UFD Tech channel or our daily tech deals over on the UFD Deals channel. Anyways, I am Brett with the UFD Tech channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.